cipher is actually a, a very, very old word. Um, and I spell it in the archaic manner because I, I wanted a title that sort of reflected the uh, an antiqueness to these works, a timelessness to them. Um, and cipher is based on the premise that each of us has a a design code, uh, a blueprint of ourselves which establishes character, uh, biography, physical presence, etc. And um, these are sort of the template pieces that are, are in the process of materializing, or perhaps not materializing because they're, they're basically virtual images. So. Um, and they are the design codes for beings, imaginary beings. And that's basically, basically what's behind it. The, these works, the cipher works, are part of an overall body of work called the Transformation Series, which began, oh, I guess about 12 years ago, with the uh, uh, Corvus Rex uh, imagery. And there's actually a couple of pieces here from that, because I've got a book coming out, a uh, book launch in about five days from now, I think on uh, April the 15th. Um, and the book is called Scarecrow. And uh, a lot of those images in the Scarecrow book, along with the poetry, were part of the original Corvus Rex series. That being um, a series of works that juxtaposed images of the raven with images of the Scarecrow. And sort of embodied a, its own kind of agrarian mythology with uh, with uh, themes of hope and fear and threat and genesis and benevolence and it goes on. Um, and also it points out uh, a great deal of it is it through the personification of the, the raven and the scarecrow as the nemesis of each other, but also establishing their relationship as one that is symbiotic. And um, so there were transformational aspects to the scarecrow in that it is a being or an entity, rather, that longs to be. Uh, and I suppose you could liken it almost to the Wizard of Oz. You know, I'm thinking of this right now, of how um, I believe the Scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz wanted a brain, right? Well, this guy, the, the Scarecrow, the metaphorical image in the Scarecrow uh, series, is actually someone who wants to be. So it, you get a lot of hybrid imagery, half human, half Scarecrow. That's number one of the Transformation series. Number two of the Transformation series is a series called Chrysalid. Um, and that is, a, that is an older term, again, of the word chrysalis. The chrysalis being the cocoon. So that series dealt with uh, the idea of metamorphosis, which is also, again, transitional and uh, part of the Transformation series. And it dealt with beings that were in the process of coming out of their cocoons and entering into the real world. So that was the second part of the Transformation series. The third part was the Magic series. And it dealt with all aspects of magic, uh, prestidigitation, which would be acts of magic on the stage. And of course, in that sense, things were transformational. But it also dealt with mythical aspects, magical, in the, in the sense that they dealt with old stories and legends. And uh, so that was the, that's the, the third part of the Transformation series. The fourth part is the Cypher series. And it basically deals with the transformation process of how we came to be um, through, as I explained earlier, um, 
through the design codes that are established, almost like DNA being the precursor to the human being that will exist later on. And the fifth part of the series, which will come in the future, is called the Revenant series, which is what happens to us as we leave. So that basically puts it long-windedly into context.